Thank you. Right, uh, guys, um, of course, in the next half hour, we've got some um, uh, other guests that we're going to be inviting onto the into the show of uh, Brani Basama Conversations. Uh, first up, he is not around at the moment, but he'll, he will be. He's gone off somewhere, but he doesn't realize he's going to be on. I'll bring um, our first guest on. Uh, they are called the Wordsmith of Kuching, uh, and it's going to be quite interesting because uh, I will be speaking to uh, one of the, uh, the, I will say, the founders. Uh, his name is uh, McLean Patrick. And there you are. Hi, McLean. How are you? Hi, Hi. Mike. Hi, fine. Hi. Bye. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Clear? Yeah, yeah. Dah, dah nyiru, uh, udah. Okay. Udah. <laughs> Actually, I, I came from my mother's house. So uh, when you're at your parents' house, beer is kind of the yes. given. <laughs> well, there you know, I, I'm, I'm struggling. I understand. <laughs> 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 we, we we need our barbecues on Sundays. <laughs> yes, yes. You you're looking nice and red as well, which is great. Nice glow to yourself. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was I was trying to avoid that just now, but anyway, <laughs> no, no, it happens. No, it happens. <laughs> oh no, no, no! It's just rocking. That's never gonna happen. All right. Um. Of course. Uh. Next up, we're gonna. Um. He. I've he, known him since he was a, a young kid. He's nice and tall now, but he's, to me, he's still a young kid. Um, he's, he's a he's a footballer and and a goalkeeper to boot. Uh, let's bring him on to our show. Said Adni, hi, are you Adni? Hey, Rashid, how you doing? I'm good. I haven't seen you in a long, long, long time. You still oh, look know, the same. I know. Except except for the long hair. Yeah, I got nowhere to cut it. Well, you know, well, I I managed to buy a. Uh, clipper and, and got it done myself yeah, I'm, I'm scared you know, i might just you know accidentally do something wrong and then i'll have to shave it all off yeah and, and then your hands are very important as well <laughs> okay we do have uh, hi hi so um we do have another guest coming on but he's not here yet but we'll we'll start with the both of you um very interesting um mac um wordsmith of coaching what's that all about well um we are a community of spoken word artists so we have poet uh, poets we have singer songwriters we have storytellers mm -hmm. and um we came together in 2014 and we have been doing regular uh, events um like uh, bi-monthly so we would have a, a spoken word event uh every uh, two months once every two months so um that's basic, basically it. It's a, a group of poets uh, on a mic and just presenting what they have written. Yeah. And where, where do you guys perform? Well, uh, our, our headquarters, we have a cafe called Le Café Rouge and we perform there uh, on the first uh, Friday of, uh, of the month. So, that's a, actually a platform. We do a shout out to uh, our community who wants to perform and they will sign up and we put them on the stage and we would have normally about 30, 40 people just in a cafe listening to people uh, do spoken word. So it's fantastic work. It's fantastic. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, obviously, uh, um, there's a lot more details I'd like to know, uh, but let's move on to uh, uh, Adni here. Now you you've uh, where do I start? <laughs> I I will be I I won't be cruel so I'll I'll be I'll be nice about it in case your your uh, uh, your sisters are watching. <laughs> now you know, you you've had a quite a storied career. Career. How did you start off? I mean, uh, uh, to to the audience out there, you're you're a big Liverpool fan. Um, yeah. Uh, let's let's start from there, shall we? Uh, born and birth without telling the IC number. Yeah, well, um, yeah, um, well, Scottish mother, Malay Malaysian dad, but my my dad worked uh, worked in uh, Liverpool. So you know, if you're born in Liverpool, you know you're going to be a Liverpool or Everton fan. But luckily, I was the Liverpool fan. So uh, you know, I got to thank my dad. You know, I don't want to don't want to be on the blue side. So uh, yeah, um, and uh, when we moved here, you know, I still loved football. You know, watching Liverpool all, all the way through. I grew up, and um, you know, that was just something I wanted to do. 
and uh, my dad was, um, you know, he was big support. My my family was a big support of uh, football, so that's where you know when I was in school, just trying to, you know get into the professional professional leagues and um you know i was fortunate enough to get into the um, you know professional league starting from the youth uh, the youth leagues through salango and um mm. also you know when i left school i joined para for the for the youth league as well and then i came back to salango so that's where it all started off and um yeah uh, it was good at the start but um i would i would say uh, being honest, you know, when, once I was when, once I was in the top top level, I was playing the, the best. There was a lot of other distractions right. where it kind of just pulled, um, you know, pulled me off of my game where I was inconsistent, and uh, yeah, just you know, it's just, just it was quite a struggle just trying to uh, perform at the at the best level all the time. Mm. Well, you know what, we we we'll def definitely uh, delve a little bit deeper into into that because it's a good good learning lessons for for those uh, up and coming guys who want to get into football as a career especially here in malaysia and uh, yeah. now I, I before but before we do that i'd like to introduce our our, our final guest uh, i see my final guest for conversation mm -hmm. because this is literally the last show that i'll be conducting oh. so you, you know i'm lucky to have you guys on so and it's good to have a, a, a a musician on so let's uh bring him on uh let's introduce uh our next uh my final guest for conversations q sound hi how are you man hello how are you doing we're good we're good um okay q q um i'm, I'm gonna call you q because it'll be easier q Chief. um i'll tell you what um for the audience that's out there tell us a bit about what, what q sounds all about uh q sound has become kind of like a platform for my music. Uh, a lot of people who know me as Marcus know that I've been composing and producing music for quite some time. Uh, yep. I was a member of the Basement Syndicate and uh, also worked with the Malaysia Philharmonic Orchestra. And oh, uh, okay. I do a lot of different, uh, I have a lot of different hats musically. So Q Sound is like a vehicle that I use basically to uh, do all of those things uh, under a solo project. Okay, awesome. All right, now that's the uh, briefest of uh, introductions, which is really, really great because there's <laughs> definitely a lot more questions after that. Uh, Mac, so um, yeah. uh, where one thing I wanted to ask: uh, where exactly in 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 Kuching is this cafe? Because one day I might just pop by and say hello. <laughs> uh, Le Cafe Rouge is uh, basically in the center of the city. Uh, right. If you know the junk, yes, it's you the same block. It. Yeah, it's behind it. It's the same oh. area, so it's just behind it. And it's actually uh, an arts arts cafe where they have events. So Wait, isn't uh, that the one in the corner in front of the, the Green Hill? Yes. Oh, uh, I it, didn't it's, see what changed. Yeah, it's run by a French, uh, the French lady. She married uh, Christopher, the Iban guy. So, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so it's run as a more or less like an event space. Right. So we are not the only ones that do uh, events there. So um, yeah, do check it out. Um, before the MCO, we would actually put on our Facebook page all our yeah. events, and it's a call out to you know people to just come. You know, we put up the time and all that, and uh, we hope to get back to doing that again once the MCO is uh, lifted. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, uh, Adney. Um, okay, um, what's happening with your career at the moment? Um, for those for those guys out there who uh, who want who who are keeping up with you because you know you've got quite a number of fans as well on especially on Instagram. Yeah, well, um, two years ago, uh, two thousand seventeen, uh, three years ago, then uh, I was playing for Penang, and after after I finished my contract with Penang, um, I unfortunately got an injury so uh, it was uh, very tough to find a new team for the next season and uh, when I didn't find a new team um, I was drafted into the commentary business uh, the Malaysian Football League commentary so I was, right. a, I was a commentator for for the 2018 2019 um, and currently this year as well 2020 uh, mm -hmm. but um, in 2020 I'm also playing football at the same time same time but not um, 
not at the top level. I'm I'm playing in the third division. Where uh, after two years of not playing football, I you know I really missed it. Um, I think I still have a lot of unfinished business. Where you know the potential what I was um, you know um, predicted to have, I did not complete. And uh, I think I still have a lot to give in Malaysian football. So that's why I you know um, if you if you if you would have looked at me uh, five months ago, I'm Oh, my cheeks would have been here, you know, and my belly would have been like that. So I've, I've I've been doing a lot of intensive work. I've took care of my diet. I've changed my lifestyle. Um, I'm I'm not no longer taking for granted what I used to have, where that was the downfall where I took for granted when I was playing football uh, mm. professionally, and um, you know I didn't think of the future. So now. Um, you know, I really want to. I want to get back into into playing football, and uh, you know, really take it as serious as I should have been doing. And uh, you know, hopefully, it's um, it's going to be a step where you know I can get some positive uh, positive uh, work for myself. And um, hopefully, you know, I just want to get back into the the Malaysian Super League and play at the, the highest level. But um, other than that, commentary has been good. It's, it was a whole different perspective of uh, looking at football. Um, yep. you're, you're, you're watching 22 players uh, play on the field. You have to you have to know every single name of the player on the pitch. Uh, you need to. There's a there's a lot of work. It's, it's not easy. You have to do a lot of research before the start of the game. Um, mm. And uh, you know, as a player, I did not know. You know, sometimes I would go go in to a game and uh, look at a name and I'll be like never heard of him but yeah. now going as a commentator you know I, I know every player's name I know which position they play I know the, you know it's just, it's just a whole different perspective of football where which I didn't know even when I was playing because when when you're playing when you're playing you know you, you're gonna know the big players name you mm. know you, you you'll know the all the big teams who play but um, yeah, once I finished football and started commentary, it was a whole different level where I was learning players' names. You know, there were some players who played for five, six years who have, a, you know, you know, in my head I never heard of. But and then you 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 do the commentary and then you're like, oh, I don't remember playing against him, but you did play yeah. against him. So yeah. yeah, commentary was good. Um, it's still good. You know, uh, we as 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 everyone we're still waiting for football to come back. You know, the German league they started started yesterday and uh you know in malaysia we're still waiting for the malaysian league to to come back again and uh you know i'm 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 just training and keeping keeping fit getting ready for when that's gonna come again and uh you know i'm not gonna make the same mistakes as i did before i'm looking for the future looking forward to getting back to playing and um you know it's just positive vibes all the way yeah well pretty much a once bitten twice shy and we'll talk about your that 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 regime that you went on to get to where you are at the moment yeah. now Mar marcus um very interesting the the q sound how did how did you um how did you get uh, how did you create the the name q sound and was it something on the spur moment or something that you've always wanted to do which you explained uh, earlier uh q sound was basically like a combination of a couple of nicknames that i used to have mm. still have uh some of my good friends call me q and uh, some of my friends from college used to call me sound just because I play trombone. I guess it means I play really loud or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, I had a gig and I just decided, well, I didn't want to go under the name Marcus Young at the time for some reason. I don't know. And I just said Q sound. And that's pretty right. much been the, the thing. OK, but in, in terms of your uh, influences of, of, of the music that you uh, that you are uh, advocating, what, how did you, um, you know, where, where was the influence from? Uh, my influence is from uh, gospel music, obviously, because I grew up very much involved in church. Right. Uh, my mom's a singer. And then also uh, I got involved with jazz music. Uh, I always listened to R&B music. And then orchestral, the orchestral thing came by, by way of me uh, studying and uh getting my first job and mm -hmm. so q sound like i said is just kind of my way of of merging all of those different things together to make uh a sound the q sound 
Yeah. I tell you what, you know what, it's, 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 it's not often that I get to uh, cross paths with uh, trombone players. And that's something, I, I, first thing I need to, to ask is, do you really need to have really like healthy lungs? And <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, as a trombone uh, player. I mean, it, it helps. I mean, having healthy lungs helps everybody, whether you play trombone <laughs> or not. <laughs> but, uh, no, man, I mean, I, I think if anything, probably just having a persistence and just wanting to do something that a lot of people don't do. Because, uh, you know, there's not like a ton of careers in the world for playing trombone. So if you're going to pick to do that, then you got to have a pretty strong stomach. <laughs> yes, uh, that's, that's very, very true. But, you know, kudos to you because uh, trombone is something uh, is really, really hard to play. Um, you're trying to get the perfect sound coming out of that thing. And, and a lot of people suffer. I mean, how long did it take you? you, you, you I mean, obviously, you, you've come from a very choral family, but why pick up a trombone? You could have picked up anything else. <laughs> uh, people always ask me this, and I, I try to stay true to the, the realest answer. And uh, it's going to sound nonsense, but for some reason, when I was in high school and I was picking a trombone, I thought it was going to give me some girls. And so, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on. I thought that. But <laughs> what kind of girls are you thinking of getting? <laughs> I mean, the pretty one. You know? <laughs> I, I thought it was a drum. <laughs> nah, well, I, I thought it was no, a drum. We, 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 we get to draw some competition, though, because we got that slide. They, I don't know. Sometimes Ooh. if you... If you operate the slide right, they, they get captivated by that sometimes. So, <laughs> All right, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll tell my son to pick up the trombone. <laughs> <laughs> be really, really interesting. Okay. And anyway, we'll, we'll I'll hold you off there. Um, Mac, what's the the scene like in in Kuching right now? Uh, is spoken word uh, obviously it's picked up a lot in here in this side uh, in in West Malaysia, but you know our people in. We do like we we do like to uh, on Saturdays more we're more relaxed as a, as a, as a people Borneans are, are like that. But spoken word, I mean, how what's the what's the thing like in 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 Kuching right now? Um, I would say that uh, the past I think uh, two years has been really good for us, and. Um, it was a bit slow at first because we had to at least tell people that there was such a thing as spoken word. Right. So when we introduced it in Kuching, um, you'd be amazed how many people came out because they did it in college. They did it like overseas. They mm -hmm. did it in KL. And then when we built the platform for them in Kuching, they just came out of the woodwork and, and just did their thing. So uh, we've been, since 2018, we've been part of the What What Kuching Arts Festival. So, right. and uh, last year we put together a spoken word theater, uh, collaborating with uh, my poets Malaysia, um, uh, I think Jama Raslan. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, Jamal came over to Kuching, uh, hooked up with us and loved the place and he had been back every year since. So we've been working with them to, to bring a uh, theater and all that. And this year we had a theater plan to a spoken word theater for the Fringe Festival, which uh, unfortunately was canceled. Yeah. Um, and then we were also looking at doing a spoken, a slam poetry competition for yeah. the annual day, for the, the month of October, uh, when what about Kuching was was coming around, yes. so the the scene is is, is here, and um, but it's not just spoken word. I think the art scene seems to have been seem to have moved to Kuching. Um, yes. We yeah we felt that uh, a lot of KL outfits, Semenanjung outfits, have been coming over to Kuching to just set up shop, you know, and to run events and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just spoken word. We have, you know, like busking, music, uh, theater, and, and art in itself. There's just this explosion the past two years or so. So um, Kuching is definitely the art spot of the country, so to speak. You know, it's, it's where you can try out your chops. The crowd is very forgiving, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, you know, we're, not to say anything bad, but we're, we're, you know, we're probably half drunk most of the time. I'm not saying that. I'm just. We just like to have fun. 
it's people just the way it is. Yeah. yeah, people people are more laid laid back, yeah. and yeah, people are just laid back. They're they're more uh, they're more um, welcoming, and yes. they, if you put up a good show, uh, they will applaud you. They will tell you it's a good show, and and that's basically what Kuching nights are, are are about. So if any of you two want to come over to Kuching, run your thing. By all means, do come over. You know, uh, we can hook you up with the the movers in Kuching, those who run it. You know, mm-hmm. just set up shop, and you'll be amazed at the kind of um, audience that you can you can get. You know, here in Kuching itself. So yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ani, tell us a bit about the uh, exercise regime that you had you went through to get yourself to where you are right now. Well, um, basically, it was uh, definitely off uh, YouTube. Um, it's a uh, it's a guy called Chris Harrier. And uh, I've been following him for uh, for a while, and um, yeah, w- when I look back at myself, probably six, five, six months ago, I looked at myself in the mirror, and uh, I was like, "That's not Adney. That's not side Adney. You know, big belly, um, face doesn't look healthy. You know, I was I wasn't taking care of myself, and uh, I, I also listened to a lot of Tony Robbins, and there's there's one of the things he says, you know, um, you know, a lot of people say, okay, I'll start Monday, I'll start next week, but you know, why not start now? You know, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, when you start. You know, if you say now and you you put yourself your mind to it, you put yourself to mm. it, you know, you can start anytime you want. So I told myself, uh, yeah, I'm gonna start today. You know, so I just got on. Um, started with a workout this the, this workout i literally have been doing a lot for the past five months and yeah. uh, um you know with with other workouts i've been doing you know there's different workouts you need for to, to get in shape and uh, you know i did a lot of running mm. um i think in the past five five months i, I think i've hit more than 150 kilometers so you know th- that's part of it um before I started, I was about 110 kgs. Uh, then now I'm I'm about 80, 86. So you know, and including with the diet, I did start the diet, uh, the keto diet. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people have their doubts about it because of health reasons, but I wanted to try, so I gave it a go, and um, it's it's worked for me. Maybe it's not for everyone, but you know, if you don't try it, you don't know. So that's what I thought, and I I tried the diet. Uh, so. I've, literally been on a low carb diet for about five months and um yeah 20 24 25 kgs lost you know i'm happy and uh, you know it's put me on track uh, towards my goal where you know i'm a goalkeeper so you know our uh, the goalkeeper lifespan in football is a bit longer than the, yeah. the usual right. outfielders so you know i think i have you know i've got a lot to give um you know if i if i get a chance um you know i'm sure i can do way much better than i have ever did before you know i had the potential i didn't live up to it i'm not dead yet i still want to go i'm positive of what i'm doing i've worked hard to get where i am right now and uh i just want to i just want to keep it going so you know this mco hasn't put me down um you know like uh, a lot of people i've, I've heard you know that when they say oh you know we, we can't go out we can't go in mm-hmm. riot we can't go to the gym i, I say that's all that's all just an excuse. You can do it if you, even if you have a room, you in, you can do a workout in your room. You can do anything. Uh, it's, it's just easy. You can get on. There's so much things on the internet where you can just follow a video and do it. Yeah. I did, and um, this, the workout I did do for this campaign has been one of the best things to happen to me. It's you know, it's got me in shape. It's getting me ready for for what what i may face in the future and uh you know th- that's that's it's all about how how prepared i am to be ready for when this mco is over for when football is back on and yeah. Yeah, i'm positive about what whatever comes at me well you know again uh well done i mean you're you're probably the tallest goalkeeper in, in malaysia anyway you are six six five six 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 four six five six six two, Three, two one five, six, yeah. Two. yeah i know but you're actually taller than you look especially now that yeah. you're thin yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, some some people who have saw me, uh, like, saw me like five months ago and look at me and they're like, they don't recognize me. So, well, especially with that hairstyle. Oh, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 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 need a, I need a barber. Need a come on, I know, I know, I know. Right, right, Marcus, um, um, tonight's performance at 10 p.m. Um, 
what can our audience expect? Um, uh, I, I understand it's going to be a, a you're going to be performing with uh, with a rapper. Can you l let me let us know um, a, a teaser of what what's what's to come at 10 p.m. tonight? Uh, so the first, uh, oh, well, I'm not sure the order, but the, um, there's going to be one song which will be with the rapper Vandal. Uh, shout out to Vandal, um, mm. and it's an original song that I that I wrote and produced called yep. "You Got It." And then the other song will be a solo piano uh, song that I actually wrote while waiting in a uh, in a music shop to get service called "Time." <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome story. So, He's not only a trombonist; he can play the piano as well. What else can't you do? <laughs> Oh, I can't play football. <laughs> I'll teach you, mate. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah. And and that's your your, your composition. So the time and uh, and you got it. You got it in time. That's, yes, sir. That's going to be very interesting. To, to find, especially the trombone is playing the piano. That's that's going to be a sight to see as well you're gonna have like trombone <laughs> with one hand and a, a piano in that and then then i really really will be impressed and i really <laughs> will send my my son to do the trombone um mclean mac um yeah. your performances your performance tonight um what are we uh, what can we expect well the uh the performance is basically uh we have six performers and we titled it uh, Thoughts from My Bedroom. Right. So uh, basically for the month of April, we ran a, uh, we call it Kepo Remo. Shout out to Georgette. She's one of our co-founders who runs uh, Kepo Remo for, uh, for Wordsmith. And for Kepo Remo, we challenge our, our members to write one poem a day because right. April is basically 30 days. So, mm -hmm. so you get 30 poems um, from from everyone so it has to be original you can't plagiarize or you can't write something you know it has to be originally yours so mm -hmm. from there we kind of like picked out six uh of, of of these poets and to perform for you guys tonight so oh, okay. uh, they'll be performing original pieces uh and these are some of the pieces that they 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 had put together during uh, the month of april Kepo mm -hmm. Rimo. And uh, it's going to be one of those things where they'll be talking about, you know, them, their thoughts themselves. Uh, it could be a memory. It could be something that's happened to them. But it's all, all these things came about, you know, while they were sitting in a bedroom or at home. And, and, and poets being poets, you know, just give them a pencil, piece of paper and time alone. And they'll just write whatever that comes to their mind. <laughs> So yeah, these, these, yeah, these are, are, are the pieces. So um, some of them are seasoned performers. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, are very new to the performing uh, uh, performing world. So this is actually a challenge to them. And I think uh, kudos to them because, you know, they took this challenge and they took the, the call to just uh, perform for you guys tonight. So, yeah. Oh, awesome. That's, that's that's yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be quite a good evening. Uh, of course, uh, eight thirty after in, in a bit after this, we're going to have Ray Chong, who's coming on uh, doing his stuff. We got we got a lyrical poet down there, Mr. Trombone Marcus, and mm -hmm. uh, we've got the the spoken word poets and Andy in the middle with his football between the between the goalposts. Yeah. Ooh, so, yeah. Yeah. But well, you know, guys, thank you very much. This has literally been my this is my last ever. Uh, I wouldn't say last ever, it's, it is my final show with conversations. Uh, it has been a pleasure having you guys on and everyone else uh, that I've interviewed since the 4th of May. So uh, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing your performances tonight, guys. And uh, Adni, you know, you still got a long way to go. Maybe I'll get, um, I might interview for, for another show because uh, it's a good um, test, well, case, case sample uh, for, for future um, uh, footballers. So. Don't yeah, worry, it's about not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'll definitely keep in touch because uh, there's a lot more that we can talk about. Guys, Q Sound, Mac, Adney, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, guys, please stay safe. Please stay home. Don't 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 uh, go out unnecessarily. And uh, and uh, you know, let's wait wait this MCO when we can finally go out and and see each other one of these days. 
from myself, from from the team, from uh, Brani Basama Conversations. Thank you very much for, for joining Welcome. us. And, uh, we right. Welcome. Thank you. 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 And for yeah. the audiences out there, uh, don't forget, 8.30 is Ray Chong. Myself, I'm signing up for the final time for Brani Basama Conversations. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. I'm very curious to ask you. Thank you. Now I'm online. Bye guys.